offshore wind, solar. Dominion Energy is a leader in the clean energy transition. We're dedicated to providing reliable, affordable, safe, and clean energy as we support and invest in our communities in 16 states. Dominion Energy is building a clean energy future. Actions speak louder. Welcome to Actions Speak Louder, a program about Dominion Energy's projects and community support. I'm Peggy Fox, Dominion Energy's Media and Community Relations Manager in Northern Virginia. So what comes to mind when you think of streetlights? That word conjures up a lot of images and thoughts, but you probably aren't thinking cost savings. If you've switched to LEDs in your home, then you know that you can save a lot of money because they're so efficient. Same thing for counties, cities, and towns. And Dominion Energy has partnered with those cities and towns, and some have reached 100% conversion to LEDs. Fairfax County has the most streetlights of any municipality in our service territory that have switched over more than 40 percent. So have your streetlights been switched to LEDs? Are they going to be and when? And why should you care? We have several guests joining us to answer questions that you didn't even know you had about LED streetlights and outdoor lighting. First in studio with me is Bob Lazaro, the executive director of the Northern Virginia Regional Commission. Bob, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hey, tell everybody what the Northern Virginia Regional Commission does. Well, thank you for uh, having me. The Northern Virginia Regional Commission is one of 21 planning districts in the state. We are a consortium of 13 local governments here in Northern Virginia, the largest being Fairfax County to the smallest uh, being the town of Dumfries. And we work on uh, projects as diverse as being the manager of in the region for HIV AIDS money uh, to solid waste management, energy policy, etc. So we work uh, exclusively with local governments, some NGOs and, and folks like Dominion Energy who've been very helpful. So we had a conversation back in November and you said, Peggy, why don't you tell people about, because I'm, a, I'm the media rep mm -hmm. for Dominion Energy, and you said, why aren't you telling people about LED lights? So here we are. Why are you so passionate about converting street lights to LEDs? Well, it's a great story. One, they save uh, taxpayers money. Two, they have environmental benefits. Mm -hmm. Um, they last a lot longer than mercury sodium or high pressure lights that are existing now as street mm -hmm. lights. And so we've worked with Dominion Energy for over a year to increase the diversity of types of lights, making sure that communities that wanted dark sky compliant lights had them, mm -hmm. multiple styles, multiple uh, lighting intensity, et cetera. And it's been a great partnership. And so for a county like Fairfax, when all of their street lights are converted, will save them over $2 million a year in electricity costs. Wow. And over 180 million pounds of CO2, mm -hmm. greenhouse gases, over the lifetime of those lights. So mm -hmm. it's a win-win for taxpayers and the environment. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. Huge cost savings there. I want to turn to some of our Zoom guests. Uh, first on Zoom, we have Jerry Northage from Dominion Energy. She's our outdoor lighting manager. Jerry, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, when will Fairfax County be 100% LED converted? Thanks for having me, Peggy. Um, sure, the, uh, based on Fairfax County's pace of conversion, the county's on track to be fully converted in the next three years. Ultimately, the localities make the decision on their strategy, and we typically recommend a three to five year timeline. Uh, but for some smaller localities with fewer streetlights, it is often realistic to reach full conversion and realize those cost savings very quickly. If cities and towns have old street lights that are working just fine, how do you convince them to, to make that switch? That's a great question. I'd say the driving force for our customers to convert existing street lights to LED is a combination of public safety benefits and annual cost savings, as well as the opportunity to upgrade to more eco-friendly and energy efficient technology within their communities. Now, I know there can be different owners of these lights, whether it's the um, uh, different, different uh, jurisdictions, but uh, can you talk about what, uh, what kind of choices do they have? There are a lot of choices concerning uh, LED street lights, right? There are, and we work closely with our customers to determine what we do offer. Uh, and right now we offer about 20 different uh, styles of outdoor lighting fixtures that fit a variety of field applications. Each style is offered in multiple light output levels and color temperatures, and in some cases, different paint finishes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll say that our entire LED portfolio is available to 
for all customers to view on our outdoor lighting page of mm -hmm. Dominion Energy's website. And, and Jerry, I know here in Fairfax, not far from where we're taping this program right now, uh, you, you can actually go see the lights at, at, uh, at our Fairfax office, right? You can, yes. We set up a demonstration area at our Fairfax office and we've had a lot of activity from our customers visiting that uh, mm -hmm. that office, uh, looking at the being able to see the LED lights um, during the day and also at night, uh, which has helped with some decision making for preferences when converting. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. I probably noticed like there's different. Why are there different kind of lights? So why does everything look look different? Because usually things, you know. They want all the lights to look the same, but now now I get it. It's a great it's a great way to go and take a look and actually see how they look and and uh, what what um, you know what the light looks like in the ni at nighttime, right? Right. Okay. Well, Jerry, you know um, I know you also worked with Virginia Union University in Richmond, making it the first college in Virginia to fully convert to LEDs. Take a look. For 156 years, Virginia Union has enjoyed being a beacon of light and hope for the Richmond community, for the education sector. Dominion Energy has proven to be a valuable partner for historically black colleges and universities throughout the Commonwealth. When we were first approached, we were excited just because this is what we do. But to think that we could have the first university, the first college campus in Virginia fully converted to LED was also an exciting. Uh, opportunity for us. LED lighting is much more energy efficient. The maintenance cost is considerably less than your traditional lighting and the lifespan of LED lights is much longer. As a student here I was always very proud of the university. I have friendships that I made here at the university that I continue to have to this day. A partnership like this allows us to help the university provide for a well-lit, safe environment, not only for the students today, but for students in the future. Many people really don't appreciate the power of light. Not only was it the first thing that God created, let there be light, but light has a dual purpose. One, light allows people who are in the community on our campus to feel safer. But light also is a powerful tool to allow people to see what's happening from the outside in. The energy savings that are built into this project will allow the university to redirect much of its cost savings back into the pockets of our students, allowing them to reap the benefit of a more affordable quality higher education. Now also on Zoom, we have Rob Lohr, the project manager for the tiny but mighty town of Round Hill. Thanks for joining us, Rob. Thank you, Peggy, for having us. Hey, Round Hill was the first municipality in our footprint of Dominion Energy, which is most of the state, uh, to go fully LED streetlights. And uh, you had a small part in that, right? <laughs> well, I was fortunate to be able to work with um, uh, Bob Lazaro, Northern Virginia Regional Commission, along with Jerry and her team. And our council made it a priority. Our mayor and town council chose to make this one of their budget priorities. And they um, were able to put the full funding in for switch out, um, including a pilot program where we could educate the public uh, the first year. Well, that's great. So you really had um the incentive, you know, from the top down, right, of, of the commitment, here's what we're going to do. Uh, and also, I mean, how, how many, you probably not, you know, obviously not as many lights as Fairfax County. So, um, it, but how did you decide, hey, this is doable? It, when we looked at the wonderful program that's in place, we had 68 lights, and that was a combination of the decorative new pole lights uh, you see in underground newer neighborhoods. Um, as far as underground utilities. And then we had approximately 40 of the older pole lights that had been in place for anywhere between 20 to 30 years. And when we looked at the program, we looked at the cost savings and one of the big impetus for us, our council was receiving complaints um, about a lot of the newer neighborhoods that were putting in traditional lighting. We were having a lot of uh, light pollution. We were also, um, having problems with uh, the streets and the sidewalks not, not being lit as adequately as we would like. So um, 
when we did the pilot program up front, we received a uh, very positive input from both the HOAs and the neighborhoods and the neighbors around these areas. So it was a very simple solution for us, but even for a small town, I think we proved that um, when a you know small town of 800 residents can change out all their lights, it's a doable project for anyone. And Jerry and her team with Dominion Energy made it very easy for us to uh, uh, to move forward with this pilot right. program and ultimately the complete switch out of our entire town. Well, and that's such a big deal. I mean, I I live in Fairfax County, not far from Washington D.C., and you you know you can see the light pollution. So it's uh, it's not as big of a deal here, but out in Round Hill, where you're right close to the mountains, I mean, and you 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 live there for a reason. You don't want a bunch of light pollution. So that was a really important thing for you guys, right? Yes, uh, we. One of the neat things that we were able to do uh, at the request of our mayor and town council was we. Uh, brought in a drone company, uh, Flying Fox Drones out of Lovettsville, and they flew a before and after, which was really neat to see how much light pollution we actually had. And then the success of once we put this program in, um, how much it was cut down. And it was amazing the amount of light pollution that was eliminated and also the improvement of the direct lighting to the roadways and the sidewalks. Um, so that's that's been a big selling point for us, and it was more of a um, just a, a budget and a uh, tracking device to see how much improvement. And as a result of what we did, we shared this information with our HOA, uh, which was outside the county, one of the largest neighborhoods, about 1,200 homes, and they worked with Dominion Power to begin the switch out. So it was, it had residual positive impact. Okay, so can you see the stars at night at Round Hill? If you're, near, if you're near your street lights, can you actually yes. see the stars? <laughs> yes, we can see it much better now. Oh, that's cool. That's wonderful. All right. Well, that's good to know, Rob. Thank you so much. So, and, and finally, we also have on Zoom, our fourth, and, uh, our fourth guest is Tiffany Miller. She's a senior business performance analyst in our outdoor lighting group at Dominion Energy. How many street lights in Virginia have been converted to LEDs, Tiffany? Can you tell us? Hi Peggy, thanks for having me. Um, this is actually a really exciting number to discuss that keeps growing each month. Um, but for our Vepka customers, we have converted uh, just under 40,000 lights so far, mm -hmm. um, which is about 16% of the total number of those lights for those counties and municipalities that are actively converting. Um, we're expecting over the next few months to be at the 50,000 mark. Mm -hmm. um, so very exciting. Could you explain to those who don't know what Vebka is? Vebka. Um, Vebka is the, um, it's the Virginia- Energy Purchasing uh, Government Association. <laughs> I've got it right here. But yeah. tell us what that, what that organization does and why, and why, why, you know, what it does in terms of these lights. Well, um, Dominion Energy partnered with VEPCA to develop our, our current VEPCA LED program, mm -hmm. and that includes um, creating the LED rates, product mm -hmm. selection, and then the LED conversion cost. And, and um, when you're looking at the lighting information, you see a lot about uh, the referencing to, to Lumen. Could you explain what, what that means? Absolutely. So um, the way that the old technology worked, so mercury vapor and sodium vapor lights, um, we looked at lumen ratings based upon source lumens, or that was the amount of lumens that the, the bulb actually produced. Okay. And then the light was reflected and refracted and pushed towards the target. And the target could be the ground, the parking lot, roadway. Um, the amount of lumens that actually reached that target was significantly less for those HID fixtures. Um, with LED lighting, the lumen rating is based upon the delivered lumens, mm. which is the amount of lumens actually reaching the target. Um, the diodes, they provide a directional light, and there is a negligible amount of lumen loss in the delivered light output. Um, and the other thing that we're, we know about the LED lights is that they don't lose as much of that lumen rating over time. So they don't experience as much depreciation. So even after about 20 years, they're still delivering about 70% of their lumen rating. Wow, that's great. 
So I watched in the past year, my neighborhood in Fairfax County was switched over and it's been really interesting to see the lights in, in, in my neighborhood. And I know what you mean. It seems like um, the light is, uh, there's not light pollution going up in the sky. Absolutely, um, that's, that's definitely what you'll see. Um, we offer a variety of fixtures um, that have these their full cutoff options. Mm -hmm. So the light is actually directed uh, down to that target and you won't experience a significant amount of uplight or any uplight at all. I see, yeah, you want the light on the ground. You don't want it going up in the air. So that's, uh, right. it's, it's really wonderful to, uh, to see the change. So when you talk about dark skies friendly options, how, how, does, how does that work with the lights? If you can explain more in depth about that. Absolutely, so um, what we're seeing is there are some ordinances that certain localities are creating in order to, um, in, in order to comply with dark skies friendly initiatives. And they're keeping in mind how that light impacts the night sky. That's just a general um, way to think about this. But we offer a variety of fixtures with that zero up light. Um, an example would be the cutoff colonial fixture right. in Fairfax County has chosen that fixture to replace many other post-top fixture options that they used to have. Um, our roadway fixtures, including shoebox and Cobra, those also have zero uplight ratings. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's, it's really fascinating. And one other, we talked about Round Hill. There's some other um, municipalities that have uh, gone 100%, right? That's correct. Could you, can, uh, can you tell us about them? Yeah, so we have um, the town of Chatham and South Hill. Those localities have also fully converted um, their inventories to LED. Uh, and we have some others that are working towards that as well. Right, well, it's um, really great to see when we go 100%. And do you, I mean, do you see us continuing to move that way for most uh, jurisdictions? Yes, I, I, I believe so. Um, we're definitely having a, a tremendous amount of, of interest and buy-in from our customers related to the LED product offerings. Mm -hmm. um, our team is very busy and we're, we're excited about that. We're excited about this change um, and this new technology. Mm -hmm. And I, I was reading uh, uh, on the website about uh, an amber lighting uh, program in Nags Head. You know, a lot of people in this area go to the Outer Banks. What is the Amber Lighting Program in Nags Head? Well, let me, let me tell you a little bit about that. So um, artificial lighting, it does have an adverse effect on sea turtle nesting sites. And what it, what it can actually do is lure the hatchlings away from the beach um, and go towards residential areas, which is not where you want them to be traveling. Um, by using a high wavelength amber LED, alongside with other beach darkening effects, Dominion Energy can actually help to contribute to the effects of artificial lighting on sea turtles. Um, so right now we're in the process of piloting a few fixtures with Nags Head in the coming months, and then a final selection will be made from there. Um, the town of Nags Head has worked with our teams and they have identified locations where the lights will be used in the future, mm -hmm. and we're working closely with them through the process. Wow. Had no idea it had to do with turtles. That's fantastic. I, I love it. All, all these different areas that we really do try to uh, protect the environment. It's 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 pretty neat that um, you know lighting is also uh, an issue there. Thanks, Tiffany. So let's go back to Bob. You know, and in, in what do you do in your role at the Northern Virginia Regional Commission to encourage municipalities? Uh, I mean, we just heard the environmental impact. Well, well, I mean, uh, the examples given here are mm -hmm. strong enough testimony as to why people want to convert. We're, I know that Dominion's working with Alexandria, Falls Church City, Fairfax City, mm -hmm. uh, Fairfax County, obviously. They've talked to Loudoun. They've talked to Prince William County. So th this is happening, and, and we're grateful for the company to uh, work with us, our local governments. We spent a year in meetings working out these issues on making sure that they had enough inventory, the, t the variety of inventory that people were looking for, dark sky compliant, mm -hmm. and it's really uh, working out. And it's a truly a model for the state. And we've talked to localities in Dominion Energy's uh, territory mm -hmm. far away from here to, to talk to them about converting over. And uh, the next exciting wave to this is the new technology 
that is being able to be used with LED street lightings, whether it's air pollution sensors, electric vehicle charging, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot going on in this space. And uh, Northern Virginia is the innovation region in mm -hmm. uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia, and we're excited to work with Jerry, Tiffany, and, and the team, and we work very closely mm -hmm. with Stan Blackwell, and we have nothing but high praise for the company in working with us in this area. Well, that's excellent. Yeah, you're, you're talking about uh, the future smart city possibilities, yes. and I'm, I'm curious, uh, you know, if you guys could talk to Talk more about that, Tiffany. What kind of possibilities are we talking about? So with um, the future smart city possibilities, I, I mean, there's there's a lot that's out there. If you're talking about just lighting, um, you could be talking about um, dimming capabilities, um, things like gunshot detection, um, different environmental monitors. And, and really the lights just mm -hmm. getting smarter. We're yeah. installing network lighting controls on the lights um, when we put the LEDs out now. And um, with those network lighting controls, those lights are essentially in the future going to be able to self-report their outages as well. So lots of um, great new technology um, that will be available in the future. Right, I was gonna ask you about that. So yeah, if a light goes out, it will tell you, I'm out, come fix me. Come <laughs> Bring me a new bulb. Um, what about uh, better network lighting controls, other kind of control systems? So as far as the, the network lighting controls, um, that technology will continue to evolve. Um, but what we are doing now is we're, we're already putting those controls out on the top of the light. So the lights used to have just a, a photo control, a standard photo cell that would make the light recognize when it needed to turn on. Mm -hmm. So dusk to um, dawn operation, but now that control is going to be smarter. Um, mm -hmm. So it will communicate through a mesh network and we'll have a lot of future capabilities. Yeah, a lot of automation too, kind of like our cars. There's a mm -hmm. lot of different operations, even though you don't, may not have, you know, we're not driving fully automated cars um, or autonomous cars, but we do have a lot of uh, things built in now. Like my, I turn on my uh, Chevy Volt, which is a hybrid, and I don't have to turn on the lights. They go on automatically. So that's, uh, you know, it's just interesting to see how lighting is evolving as well. I'd like to go back to Rob uh, because Round Hill is the first municipality in the Dominion Energy footprint in Virginia to go 100% LED, as we talked about before. Rob, what has the reaction been? What have, what have you heard people say? We've, um, we've received excellent feedback. Uh, we were surprised that uh, the majority of the um, uh, older section of town that had the old traditional Cobra head lights, we replaced all of our lights with 100% cutoff lighting. Mm -hmm. um, so we were able to put in the, uh, the, the decorative colonial cutoff uh, for the newer lights and the older lights had the shoebox installation. And so what, what we're getting feedback on is that it's, uh, it's much better as far as the uh, dark sky compliant. Mm -hmm. We're also getting good feedback as far as they are, they're a lot less bulky they're a lot more attractive. Uh, when you look at the decorative lights we put in, were far nicer and more decorative than the lights that it had been previously installed. We also found out that um, people were um, appreciative of uh, seeing the um, improved lighting in the area and the type of lighting. It wasn't as intrusive in people's houses, not just dark sky, but uh, we were having problems with light pollution going into people's second story uh, bedroom windows mm. and in that area. And then what was really nice is the mayor and town council and the town administrator was able to see a substantial savings uh, by putting 100% of those lights in. We were surprised to see the volume of savings that helped pay for the program. Wow, that's great. So it was uh, pretty much um, even Steven right there. That makes yeah. it's a no-brainer, pretty much. Yes, <laughs> and the, and the positive thing is, it, it's the benefits keep coming because you'll still see those savings after you pay off your initial small investment to do the switchover. Uh, but you're also seeing a product that is so much more dependable. Uh, we were always dealing, uh, probably a month didn't go by where we didn't have multiple lights out calls that we had to coordinate with. Hmm. Dominion uh, Energy because of the age of the system there. 
And we've had the system up and fully operational for almost two years, and we've not had one problem with any of the existing wow. lights. Wow, that's, that's great, Rob. Let me go back to Jerry. Jerry, uh, are you still there? We haven't talked to Jerry in a little bit. Jerry, tell me about the, um, the reception and how, how, are, how are our customers, the communities that are rapidly converting, uh, how, are they, how are they receiving the LED lights as far as you know, just everyday residents? Have you heard from everyday residents about them? I think it's what we haven't heard. Mm. Um, we, <laughs> um, we have had very few uh, elevated concerns about the change to LED. Um, and in some cases, those concerns can be, it just may have been the wrong light in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the application. So um, I think it's what we um, have seen and heard from our localities that are hearing from their citizens that this program is being very well received. Um, we have had some residents that have contacted us directly to ask when are our lights going to be converted to LED? I see these other neighborhoods mm -hmm. are being converted. Um, so uh, that's exciting news to know that you know folks are seeing this and, and they're interested in it and they're interested in seeing when it's going to come to their community as well. Yeah, how interesting. You know, I think it, it's change is difficult for many and at first they might be sort of resistant, but once they see it and they realize, oh, wow, this is a great thing. When, when am I going to get it? <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah, anyway, that's great. I'm so glad uh, it's working out and that people are liking it. Uh, that's, it's always good. No, no uh, complaint. If, you don't, if you're not hearing from people, it means that they're, they're liking it. And what you are hearing is that they, they want it. So uh, great work. Appreciate what you're doing, Jerry. And thanks for joining us, Rob. And Tiffany, thank you for your work. And Bob, thank you so much for coming in and talking about LED street lights. It's a, it's a great program. So uh, look, go to our website to find out more. Uh, Jerry, give them the uh, website address. Sure, they can go to www.dominionenergy.com and search outdoor lighting. And we have all of our portfolio available for viewing as well as technical information about that portfolio and additional resources uh, that customers can learn whatever they need to know about uh, planning conversion to LED or new installation of LED. Great, perfect, thank you so much. And thank you all for watching, I'm Peggy Fox. And this is Action Speak Louder. We hope you join us next time to learn more about how Dominion Energy is working toward a sustainable future. Be safe.